let's add some more storage space to the Evolve laptop. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Hey, welcome back guys. Got a video for all of you Evolve laptop owners out there. Well, at least most of you hopefully anyway. We're going to be adding a SSD drive to the Evolve laptop running Linux Mint. So let's go ahead and show you guys how to check and make sure your laptop will accept this upgrade. And then I'll show you how to get it installed physically and then how to install it in the software. Let's get going. All right, so before we begin, you do need to make sure that your Evolve is eligible for this upgrade. If you look at the left-hand side of the computer, you should see this SIM slot right here. If you see that SIM slot, then you are eligible to do this upgrade. Not all of the Evolves have this SIM slot, so you need to double check before you start tearing into this. So what we've got on the table today is the Evolve laptop. And if you're really paying attention, you guys might realize that this laptop originally belonged to K8 MRD of Ham Radio Tube. This is also the laptop that Frank the Tank wrecked during a field day outing. We have got it resurrected running Mint 22. Now we need to upgrade it. So we're going to be putting in this M2 SSD, 128 gig storage device. Let's see if we can go ahead and crack the case and figure out how hard it's going to be to get this going. We've got screws around the outside here. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove those and then we'll pop this case apart and take a look at the inside. All right, so now that we've got the case opened up, what we're looking for is this slot right here. And just kind of matching that up, looks like that is going to work out perfectly. So let's go ahead. These are two antennas that are used for the uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, if you're using a cellular network card, we are going to just leave these in place rather than trying to um, remove them from the inside. We'll just pop them off right here and then we'll just leave those laying around inside. First thing I want to do though is go ahead and get that screw out from right there. It's always handy if you got a screwdriver with a magnet on the back end of it. Also, uh, when I was taking this case apart, something I noticed, I want to kind of pay attention to the orientation that this goes in, uh, but something else I noticed when I was uh, taking this case apart, those screws are different sizes, so pay attention to which uh, slots the screws come out of so that you can get them back in there correctly. So those are the two wires. Those are antennas. Uh, that's actually coax that we just disconnected. We're just going to leave those, tuck those over out of the way. Let's go ahead and open up this SSD, and we'll go ahead and get this thing installed. Once you've got it out, label side is going to go up, and let's just make sure we get that slotted in there correctly. That looks pretty good right there. Make sure that that coax is out of the way so that when we put that screw back in, nothing is preventing that screw from holding down our new SSD like it's supposed to be. Let's see if I can do this on camera. Maybe, nope, I figured that was gonna be the case. All right, let's just give it another try and see if I can get it in there on the second attempt. Little bitty screw we're working with here, so a little difficult to get it to start sometimes. Now, when you're putting this together, you just want it tight enough to hold that board down. That coax should be out of the way. It's not gonna matter if it touches the board a little bit. I don't think that's gonna short anything out. Tell you what, what we could do is just put a small piece of tape right there to hold those over out of the way. I happen to have painter's tape handy, so that's what we're going to use here. Just put that right there, and that should never cause any problems whatsoever going forward. All right, let's get this thing buttoned back up. We will boot it and take a look at formatting this new drive. All right, so we are going to need an application to format that drive. So I'm going to open up the terminal and we're just going to run sudo apt install, uh, I gotta spell it right, install gparted. 
and we'll go ahead and press return. It's going to ask us for our sudo password. We'll give it that and give this just a second to get installed. Once that finishes up, we can just go ahead and exit out of that terminal. We can go to our menu and start searching for Gparted. Let's go ahead and open that up again, sudo password right here so that it can do all of the super user things that it needs to do. All right, now once we've got this loaded up, we're going to come up here to this drop down menu and we're looking for this new 119 gigabyte drive. So we'll highlight that. You'll notice that it is unallocated space. So let's click on that and let's come up to device and create partition table. Let's see, what's our options here? Yeah, we'll just leave it at MS-DOS. That should work okay for us. And let's go ahead and click apply. That will apply that and go ahead and create that partition table. Now we can simply right click on this. We're going to click new again. That's going to bring up this uh, new partition here. We want this as a primary partition. And because we're running Linux, we're going to use the native uh, file system, which is ext4. I'm going to leave this over here alone. We'll leave it just like it is. That way it will format this entire drive as a new data drive. Let's go ahead and click add. And then finally, we can choose the check mark right here to apply all of those operations that we've marked so far. It's going to give us a warning and say, are you absolutely sure you want to do it? Yes, I am. So let's go ahead and click apply. We'll give this a few minutes. Well, actually, that was quicker than I thought. That is now completed. Now, let's go ahead and give this system a quick reboot and make sure that it is available after the reboot. All right, after a reboot, you'll see that we have that new 128 gigabit volume right our gigabyte volume right here if you don't see it on your desktop you might have to open your um, file explorer and you should see it right here under your devices so i'll be using this for my time shift backups if you want to use it strictly as a storage volume for your personal files you might have to modify the owner of that uh, drive so that you can write to it right now you'll see we can't create anything new in here that's because we are not the pseudo user. So uh, again, that's not going to matter for me because time shift is going to be run as sudo. So I won't have any issues with this. As you can see, this is not a very difficult upgrade at all. I guess it took me probably about 30 minutes, and that's even with filming to get this entire thing accomplished. So if your Evolve is eligible for this upgrade, it's pretty inexpensive, doesn't take a lot of time. There's no sense in not doing it because it's always good to have extra storage space. There are links down in the description below, both to the SSD that I used and for directions in case you need to change the permissions on that new drive. Look down in the description. I've linked a good article for that. I hope you found today's information helpful. Be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.